This is Pearl Bryan. She is 22 years old and pregnant. Something terrible happened to her last night in Cincinnati, and she can't remember anything. Did her desperation and faith in others lead to something horrible? This is Scott Jackson, the father of Pearl's unborn child. He is in his early 20s and is studying to become a dentist, but he's not a family man. His medical overconfidence may have caused him more harm than good. Parents may tell their children the old story of Tom Sherwood of London. He was not the law-abiding sort, but how far could he have gone for riches and love? Tom's accomplice, Bess Evans, was a wayward 18-year-old girl from Canbury a long time ago. Sadly, she never learned how dangerous it is to run from the past. And finally, we have Lucille Frank. She was widowed at 25 after her husband, Leo Frank, was lynched by a mob in Georgia in the early 20th century. Did knowing too much bring her more suffering than it's worth? Their fates intertwined last night at a bar. Can the past be left behind? What should I tell you? Tell me what happened, Pearl. We were in a bar. Scott was there. Scott was helping me. There were other people there. Everyone looked sad. I'd like a drink, he said. There was someone at the bar. I can't remember their face. They came and served us. I'll have gin. I had water. One of the people there, Bess. Are you going to talk to Bess? I can't tell you that. Scott saw her. She saw us too. Look at her, all alone. Not very fun. Not very fun! What? You want me to amuse you? I liked her. I thought maybe it would be nice to make a friend other than Scott. I told her we didn't mean to offend her. Yes, of course you didn't offend me, miss. You're sweet. It's just a little Solomon here, isn't it? Quiet. I found myself here just now. This place is not how I remember it. Why are you alone? When I first came to town, they called me the roving jewel. Now they change their tune, they call me Bessie Jewel. Oh, the lovely day, oh, the little idle day. Oh, that I were where I would be, then I would be where I am not. Here I am where I must be, go where I would, I cannot. Oh, the lovely day, oh, the little idle day. When I first came to town, they brought me the bottles plenty. Now they change their tune, they bring me the bottles empty. Oh, the lovely day, oh, the little idle day. Oh, that I were where I would be, then I would be where I am not. Here I am where I must be, go where I would, I cannot. Oh, the lovely day. as a fire, lips as red as a cherry, and his my desire to make the young ones merry. Oh, the lovely day, oh, the little idle day, oh, that I were where I would be, then I would be where I am not, here I am where I must be, go where I would, I cannot. Oh, the lovely day, oh, the little idle day, I go and straight to the boggy mire, straight way down the road and to my heart's desire. Oh, the lovely day, oh, the little idle day. Oh, that I were where I would be, then I would be where I am not. Here I am where I must be, go where I would, I cannot. Oh, the lovely day, oh, the little idle day. I know who I love and I know who does love me. I know where I'm going, I know who's going with me. Oh, the lovely day, oh, the little idle day. I sat with her after that. I just felt like I needed a friend with everything else going on. A friend who didn't know about any of that. Was there anyone else there? There was a man and another woman. Can't you remember, Pearl? Uh, the person at the bar, I can't quite remember them. 
That's fine for now, Pearl. Yes. I will not tell anyone about it. Talk about it with me, don't worry. He told me not to tell anyone. I promised myself it wasn't me. I didn't do anything. Yes, please. Let's, let's just talk about Pearl. Oh, Pearl. That poor girl. Yes, it's very tragic. Do you remember anything about Scott and Pearl? From the bar? Yes. I asked her about him. I wanted her to talk about Scott. I'm so distrustful of men, you know, and he was very rude to me when they first walked in. She said, Oh, Scott. He's Scott. I'm his... He's mine, <laughs> at least I think. I'm visiting him here in Cincinnati this weekend. Are you waiting for someone? No. It's always more fun to have someone to go with. After men go with me, they do not return. No one will have drinks with me here now. I'm nice for the men, though. Sweet. Like you sometimes, I think. I noticed she was drinking water, of all things. And I reminded her of how dirty it could be. What do you mean? Is the water bad here? It tastes fine. Wine is better. It cannot make you sick. That's kind of old-fashioned, don't you think? Anyway, Scott got it for me, so I'm sure it's fine. He's going to be a dentist, so he knows about health and medicine and that sort of thing. He even has surgeon's tools and medicines he can use at school. I don't think he'd bring me here if it weren't safe. Hearing about love does lift my spirits. There's nothing quite like it. Tell me, is Scott good to you? He's nice. Well, he's not so good at letter writing, but when we're together, he's very good to me. I don't know if he's the nicest boy who calls, but he's the one that called the most this summer. Many boys in one summer! Well, it's nothing like that. <laughs> Virginity is our greatest asset, my mother always told me. Well... Can he come talk to us? I want to meet him. I guess so. He's just trying to finish his drink so we can leave. This wasn't the bar he meant to take me to. Well, there isn't anything wrong here. Now you have a friend. You can stay. You're the first friend I've made since I came to visit. We've spent so much time planning things that I haven't had a moment to rest. Love plans? Once we spoke of love, Scott came to join her. Lavender blue, dilly dilly, lavender green. When you are king, dilly dilly, I shall be queen. Told you so, dilly dilly, who told you so? Twas my own heart, dilly dilly, that told me so. Lavender blue, dilly dilly, lavender green. If I love you, dilly dilly, then you loved me. Lavender blue, dilly dilly, lavender green. Then I'll be king, dilly dilly, you'll be my queen. Let the birds sing, dilly dilly, let the lambs play. We shall be safe, dilly dilly, out of harm's way. I love to dance, dilly dilly, I love to sing. When I am queen, dilly dilly, you shall be king. Who told you so, dilly dilly, who told you so? Twas her own heart, dilly dilly, that told her so. Twas my own heart, dilly dilly, that told me so. It was sweet. Now I know that they're not making love plans after all. You wouldn't say so? Perhaps in a way they were. The next thing she told me was that she was with child. She didn't know what to do and thought maybe Scott could help. Wait. No, there was something before that. Someone saying some sort of song. Why can't I remember? Shush, dear. Of the story now at hand, the truth I will declare. How God leaves man unto himself, of Satan then beware. Thus doth Tommy truly find, he unto murder bent his mind. 
Oh, murder, lost in murder, is the foul sink of sin. A man of honest patronage, trained up to husbandry, but weary of that honest life, to London he did he, where to his woeful, dismal fate, he chose a whore for his bunk mate. Oh, murder, lost in murder, is the foul sink of sin. One Canbury Bess in Thurnball Street on him did cast an eye, and prayed him to give her some drink as he was passing by. Oh, so too soon he gave consent, and now for the same doth now repent. Oh, murder lost in murder is the foul sink of sin. Tom. That's my name. Some say country Tom. Was someone singing just now? It's like there was music playing in my head. I have a few questions for you. About what? You must know what Scott did already killing that poor girl. Horrible. How did you two meet? Well, that day in the bar, I saw him talking to his girl, and I asked him about her. It's a way to get a man talking. <laughs> I guess so. Pearl's her name. He said. I got a look at her and replied, she seems sweet. That she is, friend. <laughs> I'm Scott. Tom, good to meet you. Haven't seen you around before. That's an interesting set of clothes you got there. Must have cost a little fortune. Well, that's nice of you, man. I think they look nice myself. I'm glad to meet another fine sir at this establishment. What makes you think I'm so fine and good? That accent? I've been around. I know an Englishman when I hear one. How'd you end up over here? I was going to ask about your way of speaking, too. I've never heard anything like it before. I, I've never seen boots that fine before, either. Where are you from? Oh, all over, you know. My mom moved me around a lot as a child to keep me out of trouble. And did you? Hell no. <laughs> you see that girl Purr's talking to? Yeah, the boring one. Bess. Ah, she used to be my little thing. Canberry Bess, I called her. She wasn't always like this. She's only boring now because she isn't being mischievous. She has a little devil in her. I've never met another girl who can hide her true self away like that. And you've met a few? That's the right kind, sir. <laughs> I am a woman, gamble man, I gamble down in town. When the right beat with a deck of cards, I lay my money down. Lay my money down. Now if you wanna gamble, you look, you wanna try. Just pass the queens and check the keys and bet your is high. Bet your Scott, trying to do his best. 
we were talking and he told me that Per was going to have his child. He didn't want that. He wasn't the man for a, a wife and family. He was telling me about, about that when this, this woman interrupted us. Can you remember what she said? I, I well, my mind gets foggy then. That song is still in my head. Did you hear someone singing before, or was that, was it at the bar? That's fine, Tom. Did you talk to Pearl? Can you try to remember that? I did. We talked. She was nervous. She asked me. Should I be worried about Scott? What did he tell you about it? He told me he was burdened by the news, but it would be better for you both if you could just solve this problem. I haven't even told my family yet. But you won't have to if you fix it before they notice. Scott told me he can fix this. He has medical training, you know. He's at school to become a dentist. What's the difference between a doctor and a dentist anyway? See? He can help if you let him. I don't want him to leave me. Oh, don't worry about that, little lady. You're sweet. That's fine, Tom. Thank you. Now, for Lucille. <laughs> Little Mary Fagin, she went to town one day. She went to the pencil factory to get her little pay. She left her home at seven, she kissed her mother goodbye. Not one time did that poor girl think she was going to die. Leo Frankie met her- No! You will not speak about my husband like that any longer. I was not allowed to speak at his trial. How have you trapped me so that I cannot speak on his behalf after he was murdered too? Hello, Lucille. Oh, don't give me that. Why can none of them remember you? It was you singing those songs at the bar that night. Are you doing this to all them? That was before. I want to ask you about Pearl now. Why are these songs so important to you that you wouldn't let me tell the truth? The song you sang about my husband was written by someone who thought he was a murderer. They were wrong. And he was killed by people who are wrong about him. All they could see was hate. Is that something you want to keep from these people? My loss and my pain? You won't even let them see me challenge you. So what now? We're trapped here, answering to you? And Pearl, where is she? Did those things really happen to her? You let those men cut her head off. Did they really think that would disguise what they did? What did you say to her in the bar that night? I don't have to tell you anything. Don't you remember? Answer me, Lucille. What did you say to her in the bar that night? She was so worried about Scott giving her an abortion. Bess and I were just talking to her. We'll stay with you. What happened to you, ma'am? What were you talking about before? I can tell you if you like, but it's a sad story. I just want to think about something else. Yes, please go on, madam. Well, before anything else, I should tell you my name is Lucille Frank. My husband was Leo Frank. Have you heard of him? No. Is he famous or something? I'm glad you have not. Infamy cursed him. A true curse? What do you mean, a true curse? Well, there a spell on him. Things aren't real. No one put a spell on him. But people did hate him. One of the girls he employed died at the factory. A tragedy. But not on that day or at any other time did my husband, by word or act or in any other way, demean himself otherwise than as an innocent man. The only evidence against him came through torture. They took our cook and interrogated her for hours before she produced a statement. Well, where was he that night? Who did it? He spent the whole Saturday evening in my company. I couldn't testify for him in court because I'm his wife. That's the law. Well, who killed the child? I don't know. That's terrible. People assumed it was your husband, her employer. They hated him because he was Jewish. And their hatred sent him to prison. 
can he escape? Isn't there a lawyer or someone? After another prisoner stabbed Leo, a mob took him from his cell and hanged him from a tree. Maybe it was a curse. I'm so sorry. I trusted in a sense of fairness and justice for the people. All I received was pain. Cold blows the wind to my true love. And gently drops the rain. I never had but one true love. so many people be misled like that. Trickery is easy. I don't know, Pearl. They misled themselves. Are they?
think it's easiest for a woman to trick a man. They don't think we're smart enough to do anything crafty. Well, why would he want to? It seems to me men often know better. Are you sure you're feeling all right about all this? I, I trust him. I don't think he would do anything to hurt me. I just don't know what else to do. Then Tom came in. He was helping Scott get everything ready. Would you come with me? No. I, I want to stay here if I can. Everyone here knows. I, I don't want to go out in the cold. Sure, we'll stay if you want us to. You trust him? Finally, Scott came back. He was sweating like a pig. <sighs> Pearl, are you alright? I have everything. This will work. Everything's fine. I'm all right. Can they stay? No, this is private, like with a doctor. I'm scared. No, you're not. Look at me. I know what to do. Everything's fine. You'll be fine. It has to go. And so, Bess and I left. You know what happened next. Goodbye, Lucy. But I wonder if Bess and Tom know more. Much mischief thin by them was done in and about the city, but still they escaped unpunished. Not known more was the pity. Two deadly sins they then did fall, not only rob but murder all. Oh, murder lost and murder is the foul sink of sin. Bess. Is there something you'd like to say? Yes. There was something I didn't tell you. I talked to Scott in the bar. Mm-hmm. He was being so honest with me. I don't know why. Maybe... <sighs> There's a song in my head. Was it playing in the bar? I feel like he was being honest because of some song we heard. Why well, can't I remember who was singing? Were they singing about us? I can't remember the words. Tell me what Scott said. He was talking about how sad he was when Lucille interrupted him. You consider this a tragedy? Excuse me? Young man, do you really think this sweet girl's pregnancy is a problem? Speak, boy. I guess I didn't really mean it like that. Then what did you mean? It's just been troubling me, that's all, I guess. Scott, don't worry. I'm not angry. It's good for me to know how you feel about it. He's not thinking about you, dear. How? Why? Hold your tongue. Don't upset her more than you already have. Do you really know what trouble is in this life? Have you known someone to suffer wrongly? Do you really know what suffering is at all? He sort of made a mistake. We both did. Then... Ugh, oh, I hear that song again. Please, Bess, just try to remember. He was talking to me. We heard this music. He said... Did you hear that? Were they just singing about you? I think I've been coming here listening to their songs for quite some time, and nothing they have to say has ever bothered me. But, but it was something about lust and murder? What do you know about that? Nothing. I'm a good woman. I may be young, I may not have my education, but I'm a good woman. What did Pearl tell you about our problem? She hasn't told her family yet, you know. Oh, that means something to her. She's close with her family. That must be important enough for her to keep it a secret. Do you think you can help? Oh, I don't know. I think there may be some things at my college we could use. I'm trying to be a dentist. Oh, a doctor. Well, that's perfect. You really think I could do something? Well, yes, I've never known a doctor before. Do you have a lot of money? Not now. I'm just at school. What's it like? Do you have to study dead bodies? I don't think I could stomach it being surrounded by death all the time. 
No, nothing like that yet. I mean, I just started. Does that mean you don't know enough to help Pearl? I think I could muster it with a little help. Find some things that could work. I knew a woman when I was little. She'd make potions for women with family problems. One time, my friend snuck into her house to see how she did it. It was just boiled penny royal and sage. I have no idea how that could have done the trick. I guess I can think of something. I can try if she wants. Bess, talk to Tom. I don't want to talk about that. Is there something we should know? No, of course not. I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do know, Bess. Ah, what is happening to me? The song is like poison. Who's singing it? Is the song right, Bess? No! Who's saying this about me? A murderer? That's not me! Tell me then, is it about another Canbury, Bess? What? All those months ago, who killed those men in London? Did you ever know the killer? I told him I would never tell anyone. Tell me. Tom. Tom did it. All I had to do was look at men and get them to sit with me. That's all I did. Talk to some men. I told them, I, I told them lies. They would follow me. I didn't want them to die. I only wanted their fancy clothes, their things. We needed to get money somehow. Where would you leave them, Bess? Tom would be there. He had a club. I couldn't watch. Bess. He was helping Scott. Oh God, he must have helped him kill Pearl, that poor thing. She must have been so frightened. Did he cut off her head? Would he do something like that? Would he? I don't know. I will have to take you into custody for the London murders. Oh, please, no! What did I do? It was Tom! It's Tom's turn now. Where am I? You're here with me, Tom. Why? Let me out. Bess told me what you did. No, she did not. Do you want to argue, or do you want to tell me your side of things? What did she say? We know about the London murders. She really told you? That's... I'm asking you, not her. That song in my head. Where have I heard it before? It's about Bess and me. Talk to me, Tom. What did you do? We needed money. I robbed these men. I would knock them out and take their clothes and things. Bess brought them to me. We were in love, you see. I was doing it for her. You loved her? She told me she would never tell. What did you do to her? Is she here? Please allow me to speak to her. And I'm going to meet her somewhere for a moment. Hello? Oh, Bess, may I speak to you? chat for a while with me for it's been three quarters of a long year or more since I spoke one word to thee I wish to the Lord I had never been born or it died when I was young then I never would have hurt my old true love, nor of court and no other one. There is many the star shall jingle in the west, there is many the leaf below, there is many the dam shall light upon a man. For treating a poor girl so I shan't come in, I shan't sit down I don't have a moment's time 
And since you have chosen to end our true love, then your heart is no longer mine. Best light. When did you decide that what we do is wrong? What we did. You admit it then. You remember again. It all happened. We robbed and killed those men. We did those things. We were in love. When you were mine, my old true love, and your head lay on my breast, you could make me believe by the falling of your arm that the sun rose up in the west. There is many the stars shall jingle in the west. There is many the leaf below. There is many the dam shall light upon a man for treating a poor girl so. What is happening to us? I blamed you. I blamed you too. Why did you assist in killing that poor girl? You've incriminated us both and now they know all of it. We wish together. I wanted money. I wanted love. I did not want this. We had no wealth. How was I supposed to care for you? <laughs> Lost and murder. How was I supposed to care for us? Not in this way. Why can't you admit that you were part of it? Why can't you admit that you wronged others, that you led them? No! Why am I here? What have I done? I loved you. Oh, that's the crime. Well, perhaps it is. I was a child, barely a woman. You knew what you did just as I did. I did not intend for any men to die. I wanted things to be nice for you, just like they were with your family. <laughs> we have forsaken our families. You wanted to be like my parents? Like your parents? Bess! I will not confess to a wrong I did not commit. You lured them, you seduced them into meeting me. You knew what I would do. You knew what I was doing. No! You're a wretch. <laughs> and what does that make you? No, please don't take her away. You're going to jail for the London murders, Tom. <laughs> Scott, it's finally your turn. man of constant sorrow I've seen trouble all my days I bid farewell to old New Jersey the place where I was born and raised where well, you can bury me in some deep valley for many years where I may dwell, well then you may learn to love another while I'm sleeping in my grave. Well may your friends think I'm a stranger, I'll face your name. that is given I'll meet you on God's golden shore Scott what happened the family wants to know I don't know it it wasn't me he did it I told you I gave her the drink I gave it to her because I thought it would help her Scott where is her head I don't know Scott don't be cruel. Dear Scott, if you listen, a sad story I'll relate. It happened near Fort Thomas in the old Kentucky state. Twas January the 31st, the dreadful deed was done by Scott Jackson. How cold his blood did run. I didn't do it. 
And little did Pearl Bryan think when she left her happy home, the grip she carried in her hand would hide her head away. She thought it was her lover's hand she could trust both night and day. Although it was her lover's hands that took her life away. It wasn't just me. He did it. I was just trying to help. She was so worried. I was so worried. She wouldn't stop crying. And little did her parents think when she left her happy home, their darling girl just in her youth would never more return. How sad it would have been to them to have heard Pearl's lonely voice at midnight in that lonely spot where those two boys did rejoice. It came Pearl Bryan's sister and falling to her knees, begging to Scott Jackson, my sister's head, oh please. Stop asking me. Scott Jackson said a stubborn jaw, not a word he would have said. But you'll meet your sister in heaven, and there'll be no missing head. I didn't want her to die. I, I, I didn't. I, I knew her mother, her family. I, I didn't want to do this to all of them. Now all you ladies take warning, men are just so unjust. It may be your best lover, but you know not whom to trust. Pearl Bryan died away from home upon a lonely spot. Take heed, take heed, believe me girls, don't let this be your lot. What do you want me to say? I don't really know what happened. I'm not a doctor. You're a dentist, correct? I'm studying to be a dentist. I thought I knew what to do. I thought I could help her. Help both of us. I thought it would work. When I asked my classmates to ask some druggists, it seemed like it could work. I wasn't the only man who came calling that summer, and I'm not a good letter writer. I tried to tell her how to do it herself, and she insisted she would come all the way to Cincinnati from Greencastle. I didn't want to lie to her family, but she did. She came all the way for my help. Was I supposed to turn her away? All that with her head was not part of the plan. We didn't want to get caught, and that's all. She seemed dead. Now you and the doctor and everyone tell me that you can tell she was alive. She wasn't. We couldn't have saved her. What happened that night? I told her we had to be alone. Everyone had to leave. She asked me. Will it hurt? I told her. It's medicine. It will help. Will it be quick? Should I lie down? I know what I'm doing, Pearl. You only have to drink it.
Too late, my brothers, too late, but never mind. Oh, my child's There is a tree in paradise, the pilgrims call it the tree of love. Oh, I try so. I didn't know what to do. Tom was still there. Why didn't he leave? I asked him for help. What should I do? Be calm. How? Is she dead? Is she? She's breathing. I can see her chest moving. Will she live? I don't know. I thought it would shock her. But not like this. I, I thought maybe she would just feel ill. Pearl, wake up. Wake up, please. I don't want to kill anyone. No one will know. If they don't, her family. Her sister just died this summer. I, I can't. We can disguise it. No one will know it was you. But when she doesn't come home? It'd be best if they never knew. She's breathing. Maybe she'll come too. Scott, you... I can't do that. I can't do that. You may have already done it. No, I can't. Please, Tom, help me. I didn't do it. 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 Is there a bag? Give me a bag! We used her own purse that was still sitting on the bar. I didn't know what else to give him. He said, Hide it, and no one will know who she was. Now! I blacked out. I don't know where we put it. Her head is gone. That's all, Scott. Officer, please. Please tell them what I said. Tell her sister I'm sorry. You stared at her silently when she asked for her sister's head, Scott. You can't take that back. Time to sentence the killers. You are a thief. You're a murderer. You know what you did. You can't take it back. Now all of London knows. You killed those men, not me. You knew what I was doing. You wanted us to have that money. We needed it. <clears throat> For the murders they have committed, Thomas Sherwood and Elizabeth Evans are to be executed on the 14th or 17th of April this year, 1635. For them, no love, no mourning, 
and no place of burial. They have rejected their families and have no fear, no care, no thought, and no love for their God. Their story is indeed a cautionary one. Parents, cast not off your children in their youth, knowing how subject youth is unto temptation. Children, obey your parents. Men, do not be seduced as he was by this bewitching creature. Women and men alike, beware of thieves like him. Do you, Thomas Sherwood, Elizabeth Evans, have any last words? <coughs> oh Lord, my sins are so heinous, great and many. If thy mercy help me not, what will become hereafter of my poor soul? Ugh. After execution, he will hang in chains at Battle Bridge. She will be dissected, and her dried skeleton will be preserved to be displayed at Barber Surgeon's Hall. What? <laughs> Much mischief by them was done in and about the city, but still they escaped unpunished, not known more was the pity. To deadly sins they then did fall, not only rob, but murder all. All murder lost and murder is the foul sink of sin. For these bad facts he now doth die, just judgment for his meed. All such ill livers grant they may not worse nor better speed. So shall England from crying sin, but ever freed God's mercy win. O oh, murder lost and murder is the foul sink of sin. <clears throat> On this day, May 20th, 1897, Scott Jackson and his accomplice will be hanged for the murder of Pearl Bryan. Have you anything to say? I have only this to say that I am not guilty of the crime for which I must now pay the penalty of my life. Little did Pearl Bryan think when she left her home that day, the grip she carried in her hand would hide her head away. She thought it was her lover's hands she could trust both night and day. Although it was her lover's hands that took her life away. Pardon me. Hello? I don't really know why I'm still here. I thought, well, I thought maybe you could help me. I thought that once someone dies, they go to heaven. Or they at least rest in peace. Now I'm here with you of all people. Do you know? Was I already dead when I met you before? I've been thinking about it. I've been trying to make sense out of all of this. We came to the bar and you were the one who seemed to know everything. You seemed like you knew that I was going to die before I knew it. I thought that's something only God knows and I know you are not God. Well, aren't you going to say anything? Can you only sing? Ever since I died, those songs you sang kept ringing in my head. Every time I think I'm about to finally get some peace, those songs creep into my ears and down my spine. And it isn't always you singing. It's other people too. Sometimes I think I can recognize the voices. Is this it? Is this some sort of torture? Why are all these people singing about me just because I died? Do they really care about me? Why won't you tell me anything? I know you must know something. I just want to be remembered for who I was, not for what someone else did to me. That isn't too much to ask. Pearl. Oh, you poor thing. I thought it would be over, Lucille. I thought now that everyone was punished, I could go away. I thought it would be that easy at first, too. I don't want to be defined by Leo's death. I want to continue to live. These songs people sing about him, the lies they tell, it isn't right. I know that. 
They still haunt me. I hear little children singing about Mary Fagan as they walk down the street. Reporters still knock on my door. When they buried Leo in Queens, I made sure his headstone read, Beloved Husband. And I meant it. I loved him, and he is beloved to this day. There's something else, too, on his headstone. Semperidem. Always the same. At the time, I meant it to mean he is always loved. Now I feel like it was a sentence. He will always be famous for a crime he didn't commit, and I will be haunted by that fame. I'm sorry. Oh, hush, it isn't your fault. Well, aren't you going to say anything? I only know what I've learned through song. Well, how's that? It seems you knew Pearl's song and Tom and Bess's song before they even did. These songs have existed for a long time, passed down through the generations. They are stories we all tell. That isn't an answer. We want to leave. We want to move on. You want to forget? No, not forget. Just move on. None of us can change the bad things that happen to us. None of us can change anything. I just want to have a life beyond Leo's death. I just want to rest, that's all. I know what happened to me. I know what I did, what he did. None of it can change. I just want to leave this place where all I can think about is death. All anyone can think about is the bad things that happened to us. Our lives are not only the bad things. I had a childhood. I have a family. I was in love. I helped raise my brothers and sisters. I felt warmth and joy. I had dreams. I want to think about those things. I want to rest in the peace of my life. I don't want to be haunted by how it ended. This isn't for me to decide. I you can stop singing the songs. It's the songs. They're trapping us. These songs have existed for a long time, passed down to the generations. They are stories we all tell. That doesn't mean they are harmless. They are about me. About my husband. They are stories we all tell. They are stories we all tell because they are stories about us, about all of us. Well, what will happen? If I go, how will it end? Will I get a life after this? Your stories, your stories do not end with you. Hello? All of us. It's all right. Is it? Why am I here? Is this heaven? No, dear. And now I'm here with you. Of course. You betrayed me. Best betrayed me. Everyone hated me, and I'm stuck with you forever. You really killed her. They told me she was still alive when you cut her head off. That wasn't my fault. It was your idea, and you helped. It was a backup plan. I didn't think we'd have to go through with it. And you think I want to be stuck here with you after what you did? Killing all those people? I thought you wanted to be my friend. Is that what you were going to do to me once- Pearl? This is hell and you're punishing us. But then, how did we know you before? You were in the bar before. Me? It isn't about punishment. Then what is it about? Pearl. Pearl, you're alright? Scott? I'm so sorry for what I've done to you, Pearl. I knew the risk I was taking. No, I mean... Scott, she only knows what's in the songs. And they tell so many different stories. She doesn't know what's true about what happened. The songs? I hear one too. So do I. I heard mine from the policeman first in the jail. They were trying to get me to confess. It was... It was them. They did it. I can't get it out of my head. That's what people think of me? I hear it. Masses of people. People singing for all time. What is it like they're lying? 
Now everyone knows what we've done. Everyone! His songs make me seem like I never did anything. Like I was only a victim. It doesn't feel like anything else exists past this. Tell us. And when twelve months in a day was past, the ghost should rise and speak. My is though upon my grave, and will not let me sleep. As dark as withered and dead, sweetheart, the flower will never return. And since I lost my own true love, what can one do? But yet. When will we meet again, sweetheart? When will we meet again? When the autumn leaves that fall from the trees are green and spring up again. This is Pearl Bryan. She is 22 years old and pregnant. Something terrible happened to her last night in Cincinnati, and she can't remember anything. Did her desperation and faith in others lead to something horrible? This is Scott Jackson, the father of Pearl's unborn child. He is in his early 20s and is studying to become a dentist, but he's not a family man. His medical overconfidence may have caused him more harm than good. Parents may tell their children the old story of Tom Sherwood of London. He was not the law-abiding sort, but how far could he have gone for riches and love? Tom's accomplice, Bess Evans, was a wayward 18-year-old girl from Canbury a long time ago. Sadly, she never learned how dangerous it is to run from the past. And finally, we have Lucille Frank. She was widowed at 25 after her husband, Leo Frank, was lynched by a mob in Georgia in the early 20th century. Did knowing too much bring her more suffering than it's worth? Their fates intertwined last night at a bar. Can the past be left behind? What should I tell you? Tell me what happened, Pearl. 